Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. The parents of the teen accused in a deadly school shooting now face charges. Prosecutors explain the evidence leading to the decision. Local homeowners are startled when a stranger is discovered in their garage. The warning they have for other residents about keeping belongings secure. And a popular Rockford food truck has a new look. The owners open up their own restaurant. Jam and Jerk explains how the opportunity happened. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. The parents of a Michigan teen who's accused of killing four students and hurting seven others are charged with involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors say Ethan Crumbly's father bought and failed to secure the semi-automatic handgun used in the shooting. One day before the shooting, a teacher claims Ethan was researching ammunition. The next day, a teacher found a drawing showing blood in a handgun with the words blood everywhere and my life is useless. The Crumblies were called to the school to get Ethan into counseling. And the prosecution says his parents didn't pull him out of school, so Ethan was allowed to return to class. The notion that a parent could read those words and also know that their son had access to a deadly weapon that they gave him is unconscionable, and, it, and I think it's criminal. The Crumblies could face up to 15 years in prison. Their attorney says they'll turn themselves in. Ethan Crumbly's next court appearance is set for December 13th. A Rockford doctor will spend more than 10 years in prison for having child pornography. In July 2020, investigators found pictures of kids had been downloaded onto Frank Ventimiglia's electronic devices. Later, he admitted to having thousands of child porn images. Ventimiglia was sentenced to 12 years. He'll have to register as a sex offender for life. And a Rockford man is sentenced to 60 years for sexually abusing a child for years. 40-year-old Daniel Williams admitted to the crime back in March 2018. Investigators say the abuse took place between a six to eight year time period. Williams will also have to register as a sex offender. Some residents are sounding the alarm after catching a would-be thief going through their car and garage. Nikel Delgado was able to talk to the local homeowner. She joins us in the studio. Nikel, they tell you it was a traumatic experience. Eric, Mimi, the homeowners say they never thought this would happen to them. Flavio Luenza says he was working on his car in his home driveway, went inside for just a few minutes. He left the car unlocked and the garage door open at his house on Rural Street near Dawson, never expecting anyone to try to get inside. But that is what happened, is what he says. His, his wife says she started screaming when she saw the man inside the garage going through drawers. Surveillance video shows that the same man opening the car door and rummaging around. All the time watch who come in or, or who is around the house. Please lock the doors all the time. People, we need uh, protection. Coming up at 6, Winnebago County Sheriff Gary Caruana shares tips on what you can do to protect yourself and your property. Eric? Thanks to Kel. The number of people testing positive for COVID in our area climbs. In the past week, Winnebago County had more than 400 positive cases for every 100,000 people. Stevenson County has the highest number of cases in all of Region 1. The Illinois Department of Public Health says these numbers put the counties in the state line at warning levels. More people are also checking into Rockford hospitals with COVID. The Winnebago County Health Department says right now 167 patients are being treated. That's almost 40 more beds being used since last week. A Whiteside County judge rules the smell of marijuana during a routine traffic stop is not enough evidence for an officer to search a car. The ruling stems from an arrest during a traffic stop last year in Whiteside County. A passenger was arrested for having weed on him. The officer who made the arrest says the smell of the drug is what prompted the search. Attorney James Murtis says he plans to keep fighting the idea that the smell of cannabis is enough reason to conduct a search of a car in Illinois. How on earth could an officer be justified in the search of a motor vehicle based on probable cause to believe a crime is afoot when the odor that the officer is relying upon to justify the search is the odor of something that's no longer illegal? Murtis says the ruling's the beginning of something bigger for states like Illinois that have legalized recreational marijuana. Owners of a popular Rockford food truck take a chance to branch out. They now have a spot you can check out seven days a week. Michelle Rave caught up with them today. And Michelle, this was an unexpected plan for their business. 
Yes, Eric and Mimi. Well, many restaurants took a hit during the height of the pandemic last year. This one local business rose to the challenge, starting out with a food truck to now owning a permanent spot indoors. We started uh, right in the midst of COVID. Last year, we debuted our truck as a food truck. Uh, did really well in the Rockford area and decided that we wanted not to stop. In 2020, many restaurants had to shut their doors due to COVID. Renee and Andre Radway, though, decided it was time to open a food truck. We offer uh, Jamaican cuisine. Um, with him being from Jamaica and myself from Chicago, we did a little bit of a fusion here. Of course, my background is more, you know, Chicago style fast food. So we've, um, our traditional meal that we serve here is a taste of Jamaica. That's the most authentic Jamaican dish well known around the world. The husband and wife duo, along with their neighbor Laura, make up the small but mighty Jam and Jerk Grill. Rockford has supported us a lot and we appreciate them a lot. And we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going and um, strive for better, strive for best, and, you know, see what happens. After seeing success from their food truck, the Radway stumbled upon an opportunity to open up shop at Cherry Val Mall. Last year, we had an overwhelming response uh, via social media that, oh, no, we have to wait a whole year for the truck to come back out and, and things like that. And like I said, we were just walking in the mall one day and we we're like, do we really want to just stop the truck or should we see if Jam and Jerk Grill can be something more? And they're excited for what the future holds. Definitely not the last stop. I mean, I have huge dreams for Jam and Jerk Grill. Like I said, our ultimate dream would be bar and grill and maybe even franchising. So just letting a lot of people get a, a taste of what we have to offer. Open normal business hours at the mall, and when it comes to the food truck, they tell me it's still going to be around. Eric. Thanks, Michelle. The state line gets into the spirit of the holidays. Tonight begins the weekend long Rockton Christmas Walk. The tradition's taken place for 37 years. Festival goers can take advantage of holiday deals at local shops and watch the lights switched on for the season. One small business owner tells us there's something to do for everyone. It's just something fun, special to bring back memories as being a child. The shops, the places to eat, you know, grab a drink somewhere. Just come and enjoy. It's a beautiful day. It's supposed to be beautiful this weekend. There are events happening all weekend in Rockton. We'll include a link to the full schedule in this story at mystateline.com. The new job numbers released today indicate 210,000 jobs were added in November. The number is much lower than expected, but the White House has an optimistic tone about the overall economy. Alexander Limon's keeping you connected to the nation's capital. Good evening. Economists had predicted that about half a million new jobs would be added in November. Instead, we saw less than half of that number. Despite a disappointing jobs report, President Biden is maintaining an optimistic tone about the U.S. economy. Our economy is markedly stronger than it was a year ago. And today, the incredible news that our unemployment rate has fallen to 4.2 percent. The unemployment rate has dropped by more than 2% since President Biden took office. The CBO had predicted we wouldn't get to this level of unemployment for another three years. At this point in the year, we're looking at the sharpest one-year decline in unemployment ever. The president says wages are also up by about 10% in the transportation and warehouse industries and by 13% for workers in hotels and restaurants. The president said that combined with tax credits to families means many Americans are better off today than before he took office, even after accounting for rising inflation. We're the only leading economy in the world where household income and the economy as a whole are stronger than they were before the pandemic. Republican House Leader Kevin McCarthy says the White House is downplaying economic concerns caused by inflation and supply chain problems. I'm sure the White House will try to spin it one way, but there were supposed to be 550,000 jobs, especially during a seasonal hiring period, much less than that. Earlier in the week, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that both the supply chain issues and the high inflation rate are tied to the pandemic. And he says that economists still widely expect that both of those problems will greatly improve over the next year. Reporting in Washington, Alexandra Limon. Now, your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Well, we had some light rain showers move through our area earlier today, but as that pushed out, we had a lot more sunshine on the back end of that. Here's some of those snow showers that had pushed off of our area earlier and rain showers along with them. But right now, 
The sun is now set here in Rockford on our Mercy Hill SkyTrack camera, and the temperatures, despite being in the 50s earlier today, have dropped off quite a bit. And we're sitting in the 40s across most of our area, and even DeKalb here has already reached into the 30s. Temperatures will continue to drop overnight tonight with clearing skies, and we'll see low temperatures reach all the way down into the 20s for overnight tonight. We do have a lot more warmer air that's much further south of us, though. That's being blocked by a system that has been moving off of our area, so that warmer air has been kind of staying to our south. Temperatures there reaching in the 70s earlier today. But here overnight tonight, we'll see much cooler than that. We'll see temperatures in the upper 20s for the low tonight. And tomorrow, much cooler than what we've had. We see temperatures only reach barely into the 40s for the high tomorrow. Now, over the next day, we'll do see temperatures once again drop off into the 30s for the overnight low, and then they get close to 40 once again there on Sunday. We have a lot of clearing tonight, and that's why those temperatures are dropping off as they are. We do see a little bit more cloud cover begin to move in Saturday in the evening and into the day on, on Saturday into the evening there as well. Now, we do have some snow showers begin to move in mostly north of our viewing area there early in the morning, late Saturday into early Sunday morning. That system will bring us some mixed precipitation there during the daytime on Sunday. So we could see some snow early in the morning, then a mixture, and then rain by the afternoon with that system pushing through our next system, which could bring us potentially some more snowfall comes Tuesday. This is just one particular model, and this one is a lot higher on the chance for snowfall but there is a, a chance for some snowfall there on Tuesday, potentially accumulating snowfall. Other models have a much lower chance of snowfall, that low pressure system there bringing that snow before it pushes off to our east. Overnight tonight, though, if we turn our eyes back to current, our temperatures will reach into the 20s, much cooler again, as I had mentioned before, with partly cloudy skies. Those partly cloudy skies helping the temperatures to drop off as they are. Tomorrow, though, we'll see temperatures much cooler again, but we do get into the 40s, and it'll be pretty nice with some sunshine as well. It will be a little bit breezy at times, however. Over our next seven days, we see much cooler temperatures than what we've had these last few days. Temperatures in the 40s and in the 30s with some chances for rain snow there on Sunday, and then again, chance for accumulating snow on Tuesday. And then again, once again, a chance for that snowfall and rain on Thursday. But overall, much cooler temperatures. We see highs in the 40s and even in the 30s, much different than what we've had these last few days. Eric. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lever. The Bears have put together back to back wins only once this season. That was in early October. Can they do it again this Sunday when they host the Cardinals? So far this season, I'm 9 and 2 predicting Bears games. My second loss came Thanksgiving Day. I did pick the Lions to beat the Bears 24-20, but the Bears won it on Cairo Santos' field goal 16-14. Now the Bears go from playing the woeful Lions to the robust Cardinals with a 9-2 record, and they're 6-0 on the road. Sunday could be rainy and cool at Soldier Field, which might help the Bears. Kyler Murray is questionable for this game with an ankle injury. I have a feeling he'll play. If not, Colt McCoy is a solid backup. Andy Dalton Dalton's going to start for the Bears. The Bears have been offensively challenged all season, no matter who's been a quarterback. I mean, they put up only 16 points on the Lions. And now they'll face the Cardinals defense that ranks fifth overall in the NFL. The Cardinals probably have the best pass-rushing combo at outside linebacker in the NFL in Chandler Jones and Marcus Golden. They have an all-pro safety in Buda Baker. And the Bears' best chance to pull off an upset is to establish the run game and win the turnover battle. But the Cardinals are tied for fifth best in the NFL in turnover differential. I can't see an upset happening in this one. I'll take the Cardinals over the Bears, 28-13. Let's turn our focus now to college football. The NIU Huskies will play for the MAC championship tomorrow against Kent State. Seems like the Huskies are destined to win this thing and complete a worst-to-first scenario. I'll take them on a last-second field goal to win it, 45-42. As for the Big Ten championship, the Iowa Hawkeyes, like the Bears, struggled to score points. They'll get by with big plays on defense, but Michigan has both the better defense and the better offense. The Wolverines will knock off the Hawkeyes 21-17. That's my take. We'll be right back. Jordan's final weekend weather check is up in a minute. But first, here's a look at what's to come on News Nation tonight. 
One of the most dangerous times with Russia since the end of the Cold War. We'll tell you Putin's new threats and how the U.S. is responding. Plus, why are all the bathrooms in Chicago public schools now for everybody? That's On Balance. Here's Dan Abrams. Thanks, Leland. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. My friends from Live PD will have an encore presentation. My co-hosts, as well as the cops from the show, tell us what they're up to and answer your questions. That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. That's all coming up tonight on the fastest growing cable news network in America, News Nation. It's available on the cable and satellite stations you see here, or you can also head to newsnation.com. Jordan's back with a winter like forecast. Yeah, it was nice to feel the 50s today, but psh, that's long gone. Mm -hmm. Distant memory already because there's not nothing even close to that on your entire seven day forecast. Oh, no, definitely not. First day of meteorological winter is December 1st. And so now we're actually feeling the effects of that after the first couple of days. But right now we have some snow showers and rain showers that kind of moved through our area a little bit. Most of that stayed to our north. We had a lot more clearing on the back end of that, though, so a lot more sunshine today, which helped bring our temperatures up into the 50s. Through the rest of the weekend, though, we're seeing much cooler temperatures as we get down into the 40s for tomorrow. And we really don't see anything anywhere close to 50s. As you mentioned, Eric, earlier, we see high temperatures in the 30s and 40s. We have a chance for some rain snow there on Sunday. Then again, chance for some accumulating snow on Tuesday. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have a little bit more detail on that. Hopefully some models come together and agree a little bit more. Uh, and then we have temperatures in the 30s and 40s. And again, a chance for snow on, Tuesday, on Thursday. Accumulating snow. Thanks, Jordan. And thank you for spending time with us. Stay safe.